America's game. Now, 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 stop coming this everything to change. The change. That warp tool made you open your brain. Open your brain. Eric Vanek is here, so remember the name. Remember the name. Hey, hey. He got the waiver wire for the week. Tell you who to start and who to give a seat. Dropping the podcast every week. You know the knowledge is elite. After the show, we gon' hold a Lombardi. I'm celebrating like we throwing a party. This is the blueprint that I know they gon' copy. Cause my intros always go to hottest. Cause this is America's game. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to America's Game, episode number 26. I am your host, Eric Vanek, and you can find me on Twitter at Eric Vanek NFL. And today I'm joined by two of my friends, Mike and Fizzle. What's going on, boys? What's what going is on, man? My first man? appearance, man. My first appearance. Feel good to be here. Hell yeah. Breaking news, too. Sleeper added rookies. Yes, I just oh. I just finished adding a couple. To hey, hold on, my, they got to uh, pay you, Mike. Man, you got to. That's a sponsorship right there, man. We need it. Nah, I just need them to get a C two C, right? Devi. All right. Let's get that. That's shit what I'm saying. They, they must have pressed the button real fast because you were putting that pressure on them. <laughs> well, wait, wait. All right, rookies is step one. All right, college guys, let's make it happen. Captain two, that's it. right? I mean, they got guys in there from uh, 2013 or something that played in the league still, so they can get the old, uh, the new college guys coming in there too, yeah, right? Yeah. Well, who's Adam going to roster on the bottom of all his best ball teams? Yeah, I think like Tim Tebow's to. still in there. Aaron Hernandez is probably still in there. Oh, I, I, got, a, I got a, a favorite. I got, I got a favorite last pick that I take every draft, man. You will see it at the end of. He's still uh, available though. Got Daz. <laughs> my boy's still available, man. So you don't already spill the beans, man. So he he's my last pick every draft, man. It doesn't matter. I knew it. I'm drafting days, man. Andrew Luck. <laughs> Andrew Luck. <laughs> you never know. You never. Yeah, know. never know when he's coming back. Man, I held on to that guy for like four years. Every every off. Calvin right? Johnson too. You just I held do on the to dynasty those guys. cycle. Uh, Let's go, yeah, man. You got to do the dynasty guys. cycle, right? Pick them up in the off season. <laughs> September comes, cut them. <laughs> Rinse yep. and repeat. Yeah. I was at a draft that Andrew Luck got drafted, and like an hour later, after that preseason game, he retired, and yeah. we, we was in a live draft. Like the, I think it was at Buffalo Wild Wings or something, and uh, drafted on the bull. He picked Luck, and then like an hour later, Luck no more. <laughs> he was uh, pretty rough. sad that day, man. That was tough. Yeah, that was rough. I'm, I had him in a bunch of dynasty leagues. Like I think I, me and Scott had a startup that off season, and we took him like. You know, a couple weeks before that, just uh, yeah, that was a tough one, tough one for sure. But hey, um, man, playoff games this weekend finally got some good games. We didn't have any of these freaking blowouts from the week before, but uh, let's start with talking about those games. We'll talk about the first game, which was Houston and Baltimore. So, man, with Houston, I thought I thought they played pretty well there, if, like for the first half, you know kept it pretty close there but baltimore just kind of took over there in the second half what was your guys thoughts on um the baltimore houston game the defense for baltimore is legit i mean it's no joke they uh they took over and they made stroud look not very good um they really shut down that houston offense then lamar did his thing right silenced all the the bullshit that's been floating out there about he can't win a playoff game right he can't stay healthy he can't do none of that shit he's like bet I got you. <laughs> We're going yep. to the championship game, you know, because of our defense and me. <laughs> That's it. So, uh, really excited to see what they do against the Chiefs, right? We're going to have a hell of an AFC championship. Yeah. I mean, the Texans went into halftime with 10 points, and they closed out the game with 10 points. So, Baltimore was not playing. Um, they just needed to wake up a little bit. But uh should be light weather here, like, you know, like 50-some degrees. Um I guess misty. I don't know if it's raining, but not like nothing that's going to damage the game. So it should be a, a good day for football around here. Kind of sad it's the one o'clock game. I think it's the one o'clock game, right? It's the early game. Yeah, it's that's. I think it's at three, and then the other ones. Okay, six. yeah, yeah, the early one. So yeah. Oh no, man! Sunday, my mother birthday, man. So I want to see how my moms <laughs> feel, but I might have to drive up Baltimore, man, and see what's up with the yos for one one day, man, for sure. Yeah. Oh man, that'd be pretty cool to go to that game for sure. Oh yeah. Yeah, being yeah. in Cleveland, I don't get that luxury of any games <laughs> in fucking 
I need playoff games. <laughs> well, Dallas but, saves me money every year, man. So it was cool. <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah, I thought I thought Stroud played pretty well for you know being his first, not his first playoff game, but you know first you know big game there against Lamar on the road. I thought he looked pretty good, man. He was like Mike says, he was throwing some piss missiles there for a little bit. Um, you know, obviously being without Tank Dell and a couple other guys, I'm sure hurt, but Nico. What do you guys think about Nico? Like, I keep seeing like he's like a top twelve dynasty wide receiver now, and I don't know if I can buy it yet. Uh, we posted a YouTube short. I don't remember what video came off of where I was talking about uh, Michael Pittman Jr. and uh, Cody Carpenter had to chime in, and, and you know he called the Nico thing in September, right? So right. good for him that with the rise, but still. <laughs> Well, one thing that I had to point out to Cody is, uh, you know, while the points per game finish between the two may look like Nico Collins had the edge, that motherfucker also scored 34 fantasy points in Week 18 when ain't nobody playing and nobody right. gives a shit. So, <laughs> all right, it's yeah. a little bit inflated. That's why if you look like on the warp tool for almost any league, Michael Pittman Jr. is just a little bit ahead of him. Uh, but Nico <clears throat> was, was pretty surprising on how well he did this year. So... Top 12, kind of rich, but he's going to kind of hover around that area. The The bad part is, like, that group of wide receivers, there's so many of them where you could have arguments for, you know, Brandon Ayuk, Michael Pittman, Nico Collins, you know, it goes all the way down. Jalen Waddle's going to be still in that mix. Mm -hmm. T. Higgins, Devontae Smith, like, Drake London now with Arthur Smith out. It's going to be a, it's kind of going to be a shit show, but I think it's, that's really just sets up for the go-get-your-guy thing. And if Nico's your dude... Go get him. I would personally, though, like I still put Nico ahead of Tank Dell. I don't know if that's hot takey or not for, for some people, just how much they love Tank Dell, but uh, Nico over Tank Dell for me. Mm. Yeah, on the uh, the shit fantasy rankings that we have that combines with myself, Mike, Adam, Dynasty Barry, who's on the team now, um, I believe Christian's on there as well. We got Nico at consensus rankings, uh, wide receiver 19 right now. Tank Dell's at 21. So it's they're pretty close, but um, I think Nico is probably fairly ranked there at 19. I don't know if I can push him ahead of, you know, like DK Metcalf, T. Higgins, Devontae Smith, Waddle. I don't know if I can get him that high yet. I, I say this. If you can get those guys for him now, then do it, but – um, I believe during the season, especially if Tank Dale's back, because like like Mike just said, a lot of his his points um came in like spurts. They were big games. But a guy like Michael Pittman, he's guaranteed 14, 15 targets. Like the targets probably matter more than the big production because mm -hmm. those targets aren't going anywhere. But even with um Anthony Richardson, like people say Minshew was the one, but Anthony Richardson was targeting Pittman too. So right. Um Nico's still a you know a dog. He had a, a hell oh, of a yeah. year, but um, I just think if like you just said, if he if you can get a Waddle or one of those guys for Nico from some fan that got CJ Stroud, man, make your move. I, that, me personally, I, I'm selling them for that price. Okay, yeah, I, I mean, I'm I'm probably in the same boat as you guys on that one. I agree with that. So, well, his uh, good. like kind of what Fizzle hit on though, like just in regards to like Michael Pittman, Nico's a lot more bursty, um, boom yeah. or bust. Right. Um, so like you still kind of want to have those guys even in lineup, right? Like you still want those spike weeks, but if you're going to rely on Nico as like your wide receiver one or two, I think you're kind of going uh, a little bit, like you feel more safe with a uh, Michael Pittman because he is by far and away more consistent, uh, For sure. just on our spike weeks, consistency weeks, they're pretty close to each other, but you know, Michael Pittman had eight consistent weeks. Nico Collin had six. Um, but he had mm -hmm. four spikes. Michael Pittman didn't spike at all. But you kind of have this like 24, 5, 76, 3, 53, 31. That's kind of what you're getting out of Nico Collins where Michael mm -hmm. Pittman's always like 18, 19, 20, right. 18, 19. You know, he just hovers right around that range and then uh, kind of has the potential maybe to be a wide receiver one in a given week. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm going go with that. Um, so we'll go on on the second game, and that was the Packers and 49ers game. Uh, I'm sure I was like you guys. I, I thought the Packers had a really good shot of pulling that thing off there after a while there. They survived the first quarter there. They didn't get, like, blown out in the first quarter or anything like that. It was a close game, and mm -hmm. pff, that, that Jordan Love has impressed me for sure. I actually moved him up in my rankings. Uh, 
I don't know, four, five, six spots after that game for sure. I think he is firmly in the top 10 quarterback discussion now for Dynasty. Would you guys agree? Uh, it's going to it's gonna be tough when he had the rookies in, right? Yeah, I was just going to say that. Yeah, especially around this time, like April, mm-hmm. May, that rookie hype is going to be to the roof. Mm-hmm. But he has the potential to get to top 10, 11, 12, like literally in August. Mm-hmm. So in April, maybe not, but in August, you know, especially if they go get a – I mean, I don't think they're going to get a receiver, but it's a chance, you know, they can add another, add more to what they have and make him look better. Right. It's, I uh, I moved him above Purdy. I think we both uh, can probably all agree with that. that now. Been, I had Purdy above him. <laughs> He'd been before. there for me for yeah. <laughs> so, I, got I just Jordan came Love. around on that one. I got Jordan Love behind Trey Lance in like two startups last year, so it, that worked nice. out for me <laughs> for sure. He was like the last quarterback taken in a lot of leagues I was in, so I, I came up on that one. Nice. I mean, right now. You know, I'm a few weeks out from updating my ranks with all this playoff stuff too, but I got my 15, and I can make a case for 14, and this is without rookies too. It's it's tough for me to put him above those guys. Like, he's in a tier, right? Like, it's going to be mm-hmm. tough for me to put him above Tua uh, just because of that explosive-ass offense. You know, I know it didn't end the best for Tua, but it also didn't end the best for Jordan Love with that brutal horrible decision to throw that pick but uh justin fields i still really like because he has that elite elite upside for rushing absolutely game breaking i think he's gonna get a pretty good situation whether it's with the bears or you know the falcons or whatever the hell he ends up he's a starting quarterback next year and he's gonna put up a shit ton of fantasy points so Dak did his thing all year we know the fantasy point production out of that offense is still really elite uh a rich is extremely exciting with that that rushing upside I think it would probably be a big debate between Jordan Love and, and Trevor Lawrence. Like you could probably sell me either way on either one of them. Um, mm-hmm. but, I think uh, that's I think that's a hot take, Mike. The majority of fans, I don't think, would want that. But I I agree with you though. But I don't I don't think the the masses would you know drop Trevor that low right now. That's fair. A lot of them got to look at it objectively, too. Like, I tried to tell Adam early in the season Trevor was ass, like, playing like ass, and we should be a little bit worried. And uh, Listen, I got a Jaguars fan as a brother, so I... I, I <laughs> it didn't get much better, man. Now we've, no. we've... This is his third year. We've seen two years have been dog shit, and one year that was pretty decent. Um, but uh, eventually that number one overall pick, you know, football Jesus thing is going to wear off, and... uh the haters will come to the door. So yep. just preparing people, he's going to be lower, you know, than you really want. Um, I'm going to put two rookies ahead of Trevor Lawrence immediately, right, to draft capital depending. Mm. Maybe three. So T-Law, like, I'm kind of good. Like, you still want him um, because if he does rebound or whatever, like he has that Justin Herbert, like, potential in him to be in kind of that elite territory. But – uh, right now, I think Jordan Love, Trevor Lawrence would kind of be a 50-50 toss-up for me on which way I want to go. Like, Jordan Love is kind of exciting, uh, what he did with that young core of weapons. You know, that receiving core just seemed to get better and better every every week, and so did Jordan Love. I mean, I could argue that Jordan Love has had more, you know, opportun- or not opportunities, but moments where he has looked way better than Trevor Lawrence ever has. You know, and he's Trevor, look he look more with less. If you look right. at the caliber of talent around him, I mean, I because I had this conversation last week. Do we think that Trevor is held to a higher standard because of his pedigree of coming into the league and and college being the number one, and with him going number one overall and having that expectation versus other guys behind him, like even like a Dak Prescott. Dak was a fourth round pick, and he grew into that role but trevor came in supposing you know supposed to be the guy and he hasn't shown it so i think we hold him in real life and in fantasy a little little different right i i mean like i have always talked about trevor lawrence like you could take somebody number one overall they should elevate the teammates around them and make them better than what they are and trevor lawrence i don't think he's ever done that really maybe spurts here and there but not like a full season of taking the team on his back and leading his team in, you know yeah. in the big games and winning them constantly and, and all that stuff so i have trevor lawrence currently at quarterback 15 overall and that's without 
putting Caleb and May and Jaden mm. Daniels above him. So he might be quarterback 18 by the time it comes out for me. That's a big drop. <laughs> yeah, That's why I, I mean, say it's, it's really hard for me to say uh, Jordan Love is a top 10 dynasty quarterback, right? There's so many good ones here at the back end. That's tough. Right. I mean, I have Fields, Dak, Kyler, Purdy, Tua, Love, all above Trevor Lawrence. And then I think those are all pretty easy above Lawrence. Maybe Fields, you can have the debate, but. Well, he think... was like top seven last last summer, right? Right. Yeah. Something yep. like that. So. so um. Yeah, but and then, you know, the rest of that 49ers and, and Packers game, really close game there. Uh, 49ers were able to pull it pull it off there at the end, going to the NFC Championship game here and facing Detroit this week. Um, what did you guys think about the the 49ers overall? Did you think they, I mean, with Debo getting hurt, I think hurt them a little bit, but um, sneaking it out there, do you think they're going to be able to uh, handle Detroit this weekend? I'm going to take the Lions. I'll okay. put money down on the Lions. I mean, I don't know. Just without Debo, it doesn't sound like he's going to play. And uh, that offense looks, it, it's all season when Debo hasn't been in there. It's looked bad. Now, before it was like, is it Debo or was it Trent Williams being out? That That's the reason the offense looked like shit. Um, we kind of thought then, you know, Trent Williams and Debo came back about the same time. They took off. They had dynamite moments other than the Baltimore game, which Baltimore absolutely fucking embarrassed that team. Um, and then they struggled mightily against the Packers. Uh, the Packers kind of shot themselves in the foot from winning that game. And yeah. Uh, yeah. against Detroit, man, Detroit's just kind of that feel-good story on a heater, man. Nothing I'd love to see more than Detroit make a fucking Super Bowl. Now, I don't think they'll win it, but I want to see them make a Super Bowl. And, you know, I'll take Detroit, you know, with the points, and, and there we go. Um, but I, I think without Debo, you're probably in line for another bad offense. And, and one of the key matchups to watch, too, is the right tackle, McKivitz of fucking San Francisco, is god-awful. Like, he has been horrendous all season. He is terrible. And Aiden Hutchinson has, like, tapped into Superman juice. <laughs> like, this is right. uh, the Aiden Hutchinson we thought we were getting uh, when uh, he was a potential number one overall pick. And holy shit, poor Brock Purdy, man. He's got to be like, no, not again. <laughs> Some pressure off the uh, the right side, the right tackle. Like, yeah, I bet his elbow hurts just thinking about Aiden Hutchinson lining up over there. there. <laughs> I can see that for sure. Yeah. Uh, I think, for, well, for sure, I think the championship is going out of the AFC again, unfortunately. But um, as far as this game goes, I think Detroit, they playing with all heart. I mean, they got skilled players. Don't get me wrong. They can put up 30, 40 points, but. I think if they go in there and the 49ers don't attack them and lead the game, like play for play, drive for drive, Detroit is going to show them like, you know, we might not be as skillfully coached and have the, the, the tricks in the trades, but we playing football. You know what I'm saying? Like they got the right system. Jerry Goff ain't flashy. Um, you know, the coach ain't flat. They just play football. They just look like football players. And I think right now they playing with a lot of heart. <laughs> It's gonna be hard to take that heart away right now with with what they got going on. So uh, I'm going Detroit too. And I'm a little biased as well, but I just don't believe in Brock Purdy, honestly. You know, that's a whole nother conversation. But mm -hmm. without Debo, I definitely don't believe in Brock Purdy. So um Sam Laporta, St. Brown, Jameson Williams getting a one catch 50 yards, Gibbs, Montgomery. I mean, they got so many weapons that they can they can compete. They're not just the Lions that fell into the playoffs and they hopefully went like they they can really compete so i got detroit on this one i mean the the niners struggled with aaron jones last week just yeah. gashing them over I mean, and over the, again the packers lost that game the 49ers didn't beat them the packers yeah. just lost that game well in comes this week like a younger more explosive faster aaron jones <laughs> two of them <laughs> two of them <laughs> it's nuts so uh they, they better share that shit up if they want to go to the super bowl yeah yeah, Gibbs has been tremendous this year. Uh, definitely earning that top three dynasty running back moniker he's got right now going for him. So Here, Here's just a quick question, right? I'm going to get an answer from you two. Um, just sure. hyperbole. People just say it's my Brock Purdy hate. But uh, the, the Army was out for him last week because he played bad. Other than the last drive, took down one. Yes, we'll give him credit for that one. But for the majority of the game, he was ass. Um, terrible. 
and uh, the the media came after him. Twitter was after him. Everybody was jumping on him, other than the uh, the Brock Purdy truthers. If it happens again this week, and the 49ers lose, and it's clear as day, like this is Brock Purdy's fault. Like this is, listen, the defense did what they could, you know, but there's no Debo Samuel. Brock Purdy looked like ass again. Do the pitchforks come out even from the Brock Purdy truthers, right? Like, especially the Niners fans who have seen this fucking story from Jimmy Garoppolo, mm-hmm. who could get, you know, the team could get there. Jimmy couldn't get him over the hump. Does it happen? Like, I've been saying all year, as yeah. much as Shanahan and Lynch can say, this is found money and we love this guy and he's our leader in the locker room bullshit, they do this whole cycle all over again when their window is right now to win and he can't get him over the hump even in his second year. What do you guys think? You think the pitchforks come out? Uh, I'm I'm sitting here laughing because I think about all the comments you made about Purdy, and I even read your last tweet when you said, "Uh, if if drop interceptions counted, he'd be the goat or something like that." That man so, gets so many interceptions. Yeah, drops. so that's why I'm sitting here laughing, just thinking about um, you and Brock Purdy. But um, I mean, I think the truth is, uh, it depends on which side of the truth you are. If you are just a Brock Purdy fantasy truther, then you know, you you might not be as attached, but if you are a 49ers fan, truth, or you you're not gonna give it up. Like you're gonna, oh, we're gonna fix it. We you know we get it done. But uh, the fantasy side of it, all we need is for one of these rookies to pop up and be high. They'll forget about Brock Purdy like they do everybody else. So, um, I believe if if they if he doesn't show up this game, now if they lose, it's not, and he looks good. They wouldn't, you know can't blame him for that but i still think he still had to win this game regardless but if they lose and it's not on him he got three touchdowns 280 yards whatever cool but uh i'm not a brock birdie fan to be you know from the jump man honestly i feel like you could put anybody right there you put my boy james winston right there he gonna do what he do so me personally you know i'm I'm probably the wrong one to speak on brock Purdy, but i believe the true fans won't the fantasy fans will let's just say it like that yeah, I could see that. Um, so I think th- I posted um, a report in the chat, our Discord chat, this couple days ago about how they talked to Tom Brady and yeah. Tom Brady, they had him set up to come back and told, and Shanahan sat down with Purdy and told him, hey, if Tom, you know, the, you're our starter unless Tom Brady comes back. So there was that rumor. I think that could happen this offseason. They could talk Brady out of retirement, and he comes and plays if Purdy screws up uh, this one. I also can see Kirk, what if Kirk Cousins. Cousins. They might, yeah, you know, want to say yeah. Kirk Cousins. I could see that too. Yeah, yeah, I could see Kirk Cousins uh, going to San Fran and, and hooking up again with Shanahan if um, if Purdy really screws the pooch on this one. So. I think I think there's going to be a lot of quarterback drama this offseason regardless with like Justin Fields, you got the Kirk Cousins stuff, you got all these rookie quarterbacks coming in. So, I think there's going to be a lot of quarterback drama regardless. Yeah. Um so why not add another one to the list with Brock Purdy mm-hmm. and whatnot. So, uh yeah, I agree with you Mike. I think if if Purdy does lose this game, uh, there's definitely going to be some serious, all right, we have a championship roster. We need a quarterback now. Cousins or Brady, I, de- I definitely think, are in the conversation. Mm, I'd love to see Kirk O'Chains in San Francisco with that cast of characters and Kyle Shanahan gets him and, oh, man, Kirk Thuggins would be great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, be but, great. But, but if, let's just say, Kirk comes for a one-year deal and he leaves, do they – could they start Purdy again or do they move on? Like it's going to be kind of hard to bench him and then say, Hey, my bad. We messed up. We want you to try it one more time. I think they, I mean, obviously he's such on, on such a cheap deal that. I, yeah. I'm sure they're going to keep him, but I just think to say, Hey, my bad, you know, we wanted Kirk and ain't work. Come right. on for you. you know. Yeah. I mean, usually those don't work out, but yeah, that one's tough, man. Like, I'm sure they could trade him if somebody would would want him, but then you're kind of, they're kind of in the same boat again, where they don't have a quarterback. You know that this is like the golden ticket they found of Brock Purdy, the last pick in the entire draft, um, actually being a quarterback that you can actually play with. So, I think they would keep him, and 
and we'll we'll see what happens. That's that one's so hard to judge because we've yeah. just never seen it before. Yeah. Well, long story short, Detroit, go go win yeah. the game. <laughs> Please. Right. Right. All right. We'll we'll talk about the Detroit and uh, Bucks game real quick. And I mean, we've already kind of much touched on Detroit. Uh, but man, Tampa Bay. I thought um, they played a really good game too. Baker Mayfield. You know they got down there, but they were kind of just trading blows back and forth, back and forth. Um, the Bucks got a chance there at the end, and then on that last drive, Baker first pass throws a pick. Um, but man, he was firing some some rifles down there to Evans. Uh, Godwin caught a couple. Trey Palmer caught a couple. I was really impressed with um, what Baker Mayfield has done this year. I just I didn't see that coming for sure. What about you guys? Yeah, that boy was dealing right. Yeah. We were, uh, what was uh, the tweet? Like, there's a pretty good one. Like Kyle Trask and Baker Mayfield having a mid off, and it was like them throwing like passes in the <laughs> dirt and like sailing or whatever. But uh, Baker silenced all that shit. Came out and played. And, uh, yeah. I, I do wonder though, because it, it was brought up, like he he's get he's getting a contract with Tampa Bay, like a, a fairly sizable one, and this team really overachieved considering like where they were. One hundred percent. But they overachieved paying a with a quarterback that I think they were only paying him like four million dollars this yep. year. It was a hell of a prove a deal. Now when they have to invest significant money into him, like what does the squad around him look? There's like the Devin White thing, that guy getting benched, you know, uh, yeah, Levante yeah. David's getting older, Shaq Barrett, and, I know he's coming off his ACL. Evans and Godwin are both free agents. Right. So uh, th- this could be a situation, though, we got all these good feelings about Tampa Bay this year, and next year could be an absolute fucking disaster for him. But very impressive what Baker did, especially yeah. resurrected his career when nobody had any expectations for him whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah, preseason we was trying to debate who was going to even be the starter, but to me baker is a i need to feel the confidence and then i'll play good like when he when he doesn't have confidence behind him he don't look good but he looked happy when he got that job and he was playing he looked happy all year he looked like the last but two games when he was in la and they let him play and he just looked like he wanted to play football but without the confidence of the teammates and the coaches behind him he don't play good so Mm. It looked like they like Mike Evans probably said, "Look, man, we, we like you, we believe in you," and he played like it. So I, I like happy, happy Baker, man, because sad Baker is not what we need. <laughs> right. I hopefully that offensive coordinator Dave Canales sticks around there uh, if he doesn't get plucked away from re- another head coaching job or something, because uh, I think that was really the key there was getting him and Baker together. Uh, running that offense, Todd Bowles let him handle the defense. Um, that was a really, really good pairing for Baker Mayfield. So if that pairing stays together, they're able to keep Evans and Godwin, I'd be all in on Baker again for next year. I'd be fine with him. Obviously, they need to get upgrade the offensive line a little bit. Um, I think Trey Palmer is a hell of a third wide receiver. Like I'm not like saying he's going to be some top 20 dynasty wide receiver, but he's a guy that I'm I'm interested in. Like. You know, he's in the – I probably have to move him up here some, but he's, like, in the Jacoby Myers range for me. I think he could be, like, you know, he'll have a few weeks where, you know, it's, like, three for 30, caught the ball, but he's also going to have some five for 130s too. So I uh, was really impressed with Trey Palmer for sure too. Pass. Yeah, I like Trey. You don't like Trey Palmer? <laughs> I like Trey. I like Trey, man. I mean, he's the best ball wide receiver, so that's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. for sure. That for sure. That there's no chance I want any part of him and any value for lineup. Like I'm good. Like I see people out there, they're like, trade, you know, go trade the third for him. Fuck that, man. Give me the third. Then trade Palmer. Easily. Right. But yeah, I, mean, I can fine. see that. I can't let you disrespect Jacoby Myers either. Like Jacoby Myers I, far and away much better than Trey Palmer. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. I, ain't gonna lie I, I take, mean, I'm talking the same Kobe. range. If the range is like is seventy wide receivers deep, then maybe yeah, I guess. <laughs> Okay. One of them's like forty, all right, in the regs. So the other one's sixty, seventy. Yeah, I, I think I have Trey Palmer maybe a little too low. I think I got to move him up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Jacoby, Jacoby was on a heater for like six weeks, man. He was like mm-hmm. nineteen, twenty, twenty-two. He was cooking. Yeah, right. I, mean, I mean Palmer was seventy ninth in points per game. Like, I'm good. Yeah, I well, uh, you know, the first half of the season he was fucking couldn't see him anywhere. So I get it. <laughs> That's but a, I mean, how he ended the season, he was like Rashid Shaheed, like fucking Rashid Shaheed, never fucking heard of him. And then he goes out the last half of uh, his rookie year and was blowing up. It's like kind of the same thing. So that's kind of where I'm thinking of him at. I got you. Best ball team. 
Yeah, okay. best ball. I mean, cool. lineup, it's going to be hard to play that guy. I get it. So The 20th round, Trey Palmer. <laughs> well, if, if if God went, oh, Mike Evans will come back, he'll he move up a little bit more. That's yeah, cool. exactly. So he's got that going for him, too. Um, and then the last game there, Chiefs and Bills, another epic game between those two teams. Uh, man, Josh, Josh Allen just can't get over that Patrick Mahomes hump at all. But um, I definitely didn't see Kansas City uh, playing that well. I mean, they last two weeks, man, they've just been playing really good football, being able to run the ball. Mahomes has been passing in Rasheed Rice. Travis Kelsey finally had a game for him. We'll see what they can do this week against Baltimore. Um, what's your guys' thoughts about this Chiefs and uh, Baltimore game coming up? This is the one I'm really looking forward to watching. Uh, highly competitive. I don't know which way it's going to go. I got a eerie feeling, though, it'll probably be the Chiefs. Like, mm-hmm. just just kind of fucking tired of it, you know? I'd, I'd love to see Baltimore, so I'll probably actually be rooting for Baltimore in the game, but just kind of feels like it's going to be the fucking Chiefs again. Like, they're just getting hot at the right time and coming along, and I don't know. Baltimore's defense is incredible, though. It just, in today's game, sometimes when you rely on your defense too much, man, a good-ass quarterback like Patrick Mahomes can just say, fuck that defense. <laughs> like, right. No matter what you're going to do. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, it, it should be a really, really close game. I just hope uh, Lamar comes and can actually get some stuff done through the air, put a little pressure on Patrick Mahomes at least, and we don't get a uh, – doesn't get out of hand where, like, Lamar is now trying to play catch-up. So right, Baltimore's right. got to start strong and come out come out of the gates fire. Yeah, I was going to say, unfortunately, no matter how good Baltimore defense is, is this Pat Mahomes is going to, you know, do what he want to do at some point of the game. Um, I think it's going to be Baltimore, uh, not Baltimore versus the Chiefs, but Lamar versus Pat Mahomes. At probably not the whole game, but by that fourth quarter, it's going to be shot for shot, drive for drive. Um, I think it's coming down to the wire, and uh, hopefully, it's like the wire in Baltimore. You know, takes the takes it home. Man. You know, what I'm saying I'm going for Baltimore. Okay. Sure. Yeah, I, I'd like to see Baltimore just to give us somebody different. Um, but, man, the, the Chiefs just know how to get it done, man. So I wouldn't put it past them to go ahead and sneak yeah. this one through. Here's a, a fun little stat I uh, saw on Twitter the other day. Do you guys know the last time a AFC championship game did not feature the Chiefs or the Patriots? Hmm. Man. It was the year that the Broncos won with Peyton Manning, right? Nope. Nope, because they beat the Patriots. Oh, no, no, my fault. I'm thinking about the Super Bowl. I'm sure. Um, yeah. They beat the Patriots in the AFC Championship. Oh, baby. Do you got to go back to, like, 2000s? Would it be, like, Ravens or uh, somebody? No, not the 2000s, like, 2010s. 2010s. Uh, both quarterbacks are not in the league anymore. The AFC champion. So Pittsburgh, Baltimore. Did we have a Pittsburgh, Baltimore? You have one of the teams. You got you got Pittsburgh, right? You don't have the other team, right? Though. Oh, the Colts. Was Colts. it the Colts? Nope. Nope. Damn. It's Pittsburgh with Ben Roethlisberger and the New York Jets with Mark Sanchez. Oh yeah, we've got about old Sanchez there wow. getting to a. That's how long it's been since we've had a non, mm. you know, a non-Chiefs Patriots. Didn't the Jets uh, win AFC that game? championship game? No. no, Steelers won that. Oh, I Steelers think that was the. Was that the Arizona Super Bowl? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think that was the Arizona Super Bowl where they yeah. went to played Arizona. I guess I should have got that one too because I was out here chirping at uh, Joel Klatt for his fucking trash ass take he threw out there. Oh, <laughs> like, I, what are we even talking about with this Purdy thing? He's made back to back at uh, conference championship games. I'm like, yeah, so did Mark Chan- Sanchez, motherfucker. That's what we knew was good. <laughs> Marquis Sanchez <laughs> went back to back. Who um, gives a fuck? <laughs> like that's a stat I'm supposed to care about, right? I just thought it was interesting. I saw that um, that little uh, stat come across my Twitter. I'm like, man, it's been a long ass time since we've had a uh, non Chiefs and Patriots yeah. AFC Championship game. All right, so uh, on this episode, I want to go through the three new mocks that came out from uh, Mel Kuyper, Daniel Jeremiah, and Bucky Brooks. Just going to kind of go through them, talk about the landing spots for each of these, and um, anything else that we take away from it. So we'll start with Kuyper's first. 
Um, number one overall, Chicago Bears taking Caleb Williams. Seems like every single mock is having that right now. Caleb to the Bears. Uh, lots of smoke on that. I think my one thing is it's going to take, you know, where is it going to take Justin Fields? Um yeah, I'll just read kind of Kuyper's excerpt he has here on Fields. He says, Williams is a better prospect than Fields. We've now seen three NFL seasons from Fields, and he hasn't put everything together on a consistent basis. There are too many unknowns for a guy with 38 career starts. He has completed just 60.2% of his passes while throwing 40 touchdown passes and 30 interceptions and averaged just seven yards an attempt in his career. So... Yeah, it's pretty damning for Justin Fields when you put it that way with those stats. Um, and like he said, I think the biggest thing is there's still way too many unknowns for a guy who's three years into the league. Uh, yeah, he's missed a game here or there, but there's still enough starts to kind of evaluate Fields. So I kind of get I get it. You know, reset the clock. Caleb Williams is supposedly some generational talent. Um, everybody's been talking him up for that. So um I'm I'm pretty much kind of locked into okay. Caleb's gonna go to the Bears. You guys agree with that? Kind of feels that way. Sixty yeah. forty. Caleb. Uh, I still think there's a chance Fields comes back. Uh, I love the fact that they hired Waldron as the OC. Mm-hmm. And some of that, like we we put that indictment on kid on uh, Justin Fields about you know yards per attempt and completion percentage and all that shit. But Luke Getz he's f- was a fucking horrible offense coordinator. Oh, yeah. He was dog shit. It's kind of weird, too, that, like, Kuiper writes that, and then, too, like, I also saw the blurbs about him saying that, like, Justin Fields is definitely fetching a first-round pick in return when the Bears trade right. So it's like, <laughs> like, yeah. like you, it, you, you kind of shit on the guy. You, you, right. Yeah, you kind of shit on the guy, but then said he's definitely, you know, and and I wasn't talking just some generic first from some, like, late team that, that had an extra one. He was mm-hmm. like... Falcons would trade number eight overall for him right now. I'm like, what the fuck, man? I I don't see that happening, especially with a new coach. And yeah, I don't see that happening. But yeah, as far as the Caleb to the Bears, it's it's getting more and more clear. Like it was 50 50, you know, maybe a month ago for me. Now it feels like 60 40. Caleb's kind of where it's going to go. Wouldn't be shocked either, too. I mean, Caleb has got a a hell of a a hell of a resume, but we also got to see when we get to this draft, like combine time. People really start picking apart these prospects for the dumbest shit, man. CJ Stroud for his fucking S two score. Justin Fields was the the seizure thing. If I epilepsy, I think he had right. Like he got knocked for that. I don't know. I just I, I hope there isn't something that comes up with Caleb. Like Caleb is really fucking good at football, but you know the people are gonna yeah. knock him because he paints his fingernails or you know he cried during one game. I don't know. Yeah, Some wasn't bullshit. there something about? Um... Some they criticized one of his responses. Like uh, they asked, like who was the person he talked to after a big loss, and he like he went right to his mom or something. I don't remember yeah. what the whole story yeah. was. So they there's going to be stuff like that. Yeah, they're going to find um, something to write in the papers. You know how they do. Yeah. What, what do you think, Phil? You think Caleb to the Bears pretty locked in? Uh, I think unless they get blown off the feet with a trade offer like Atlanta, the number eight overall or something like that, then they going they gonna go ahead and get Caleb. Just reset the market, um, right. save some money. Um, they can't keep fields at that point. So, do right. they just like if you take Caleb, you showing your hand. So it's like, does the first offer you get, do you just take it for fields, or how do you play that that situation when it comes to the trade? Well, I mean, I think there's still going to be a market regardless because teams need quarterbacks. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So you could probably play the market a little bit. Um, Especially after free agency, like when people see where Kirk Cousins goes and we'll Mm -hmm. see which teams do not have a quarterback currently. So I think that could narrow it down and give you a better trade deal. Um, We'll see what happens there. I think, you know, a lot of us say Atlanta. uh, We talked about the Raiders. uh, A couple other teams, I'm sure, could use a a quarterback off the top of my head. So. Um, we'll see what happens. I think, you know, even Washington and New England, like, yeah, they're set up here for uh, taking Jaden Daniels or Drake May. But if for some reason, hey, we like Justin Fields a little bit more, I wouldn't put it past Washington or New England to go ahead and trade for him, not giving up the second or third pick, um, but maybe a second and another pick to go ahead and get Fields. And then they can just draft Marvin Harrison to go with him at two or three. So I could see, I could see that as a possibility as well. <sighs> 
So uh, yeah, I kind of like the way you're talking, Eric. That hey, look, I, I never thought of it that way, Evie, but that's it. Hey, that's mm-hmm. a great the, move, man. For the, you, you pay it. You pair Fields in Washington with Terry mm-hmm. McLaurin, Jahan Dotson, and Marvin Harrison fucking Jr. And Ben Johnson. Oh. Who's the favorite for that? I mean, that's a possibility. Dude, yeah, I don't even like. I'm not even a B Rob fan, but like, just because that offense would be humming like a motherfucker, <laughs> could be like, yeah, let I'm me not... get some B Rob. He's gonna fall in the end zone twenty times this year. Let's go. I thought of it that right. way. That's that's a good look. Yeah. Like, um, number two here was Washington taking Jaden Daniels. I think it's we're gonna have this all off season. It's flip flop between Drake May, Jaden Daniels at two and three. Um, I personally, I think just the way the NFL is playing now, even though Drake may can run, I'm not, I'm not saying he can't Jade Daniels is like on the level of Lamar Jackson and Justin Fields and, you know, Jalen hurts, all these top rushing quarterbacks, Jaden Daniels can produce 600, 700, 800 rushing yards. So I think Jaden Daniels in today's NFL gives me a little bit of that, you know, that upside to be, you know, make my offense more multiple. So I really like Jaden Daniels there at number two. I think that's ultimately where he's going to end up is the number two overall pick to whoever, you know, if somebody moves up for him or, or the Washington sticks there and takes Jaden Daniels, I think that'd be a good spot for him and pairing him with Ben Johnson, uh, McLaurin, Jahan Dotson. I think that's going to be a really good pairing. This is a, if this were to happen, Jaden Daniels goes number two. I don't care if it's to Washington. I don't care if it's a Patriots trade up. I don't care if it's Falcons, whoever. Insert team. If he goes number two overall, Jane Daniels would be my 101 in Superflex. Caleb's awesome. Okay. But after talking with Adam last night on 4D, you're just about rushing quarterbacks and that elite floor that they provide you, where quarterbacks across the board were struggling with zone coverages this year, like really putting up fantasy points. And we saw how bad it was. The ones who didn't struggle. Dudes who can run the fucking football and yep. can run it at a level, like like you said, Eric, Jalen Hurts, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson. Like, if you can do it, sheer walking 20-burger right out the gate. Yep. Right. Daniel Jones, two years ago, elevated himself to a second-round startup pick because yep. he had 800 rushing yards on the ground, right? Not yep. because he's any real, really good at f- throwing the fucking football, man. <laughs> I mean, you go back to the, uh, the 2000s with Tim Tebow. Like Tim Tebow was terrible at throwing the ball, but he was a top 10 fantasy quarterback just off of the rushing. Cam Newton was the 101 quarterback there for a long time. Right. Because he's yeah, putting you got in him. 600 I mean, look yards at, um, on the ground and 20 touchdowns. Look at Anthony Richardson before his injury. Like, he wasn't like yeah. lighting up 300 yard passing games, but his rushing and rushing touchdowns, like, Anthony Richardson's like just as big as Jalen Hurts and uh, Josh Allen. I mean, he's going to be able to get. 15 rushing touchdowns probably too at some point in his career yeah i i like drake may the quarterback prospect more mm-hmm. than i like Jaden daniels but for fantasy purposes dynasty purposes Jaden daniels for sure right and i would take him over caleb if you were to get you know back-to-back draft capital assuming here right not no offense to caleb but you we we think if caleb is like he can run the football and he can a little bit but you look at, uh, we were looking at scramble yards last night. The most he ever had was 200 yards. Like Drake May, for, for example, is you know, four or 500 yards. That's his mm-hmm. like scrambling ability for rushing yards. Jane Daniels, you know, in college, he's a thousand yard, like kind of dude, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. In the NFL, he's an easy, like walking 800. Um, so yeah, I think just for fantasy purposes, Jane Daniels, if you were to get number two overall draft capital, you go, okay, we'll just put the bullshit aside. Caleb is great. But I'm drafting for my championships right now, so. Right, for sure. Yeah, I, I agree with that, Mike. And honestly, I don't think everybody's going to believe that same sentiment. So you might not even have to move up to the 101 if you got the 102. Because yep. um, I was literally going to say, if, if a, like, I didn't want to go back to the Caleb thing, but if Fields went to a team like Atlanta, I don't know if I could take Caleb over Fields with what he's walking into. So. Um, the Jaden Daniels thing is the same. Like the the rushing upside, uh, it might not even if it don't last, but three years. That's three years of golden talent. You know what I'm saying? Caleb might have to build his way up and get the uh, cat. You know, mix in with his receivers and get the playbook. But when everything crumbles, Jaden gonna run. So you know he don't. And he's still gonna learn to play, but he's still an efficient passer. But that athletic running upside. 
and everything else ain't working, man. Just get out of there. So <clears throat> I'm definitely taking Daniels over Caleb at any point in the uh, dynasty, me personally. Hmm. Okay, interesting. Um, number three overall, New England Patriots take Drake May, the quarterback for North Carolina. Uh, I mean, like Kuyper says on this, quarterback is by far New England's biggest need. So even if they have Mac Jones and Bailey Zappi, I think you're just taking the, another quarterback here. Uh, Drake May, very, very talented player. <clears throat> he, you know, Kuyper, I, I listened to uh, his first draft podcast, and he's talked about it a couple of times about the third quarterbacks in some of these drafts, like – end up being like the best quarterback of the three you know so you look look back at the um you know Her, uh burrow to uh herbert draft you know herbert you could argue maybe he's the best one of those three uh you go back to the eli philip rivers ben roethlisberger draft roethlisberger was you know multi-time pro bowl or super bowl champion all that so you know some i'm not saying it works every time but third quarterback overall sometimes isn't that bad so uh josh allen was the same thing in his draft so drake may i think he could be a really good asset here dynasty quarterback wise i think it's gonna for me it's gonna depend on what weapons they get around him if like if they go in with you know, it's Demario Douglas is his number one wide receiver. They re-sign Hunter Henry, and their offensive line's kind of the same. Uh, I'm not going to be uh, really in love with Drake May for sure. Yeah, that would be a worst case scenario for him, right? You know, good news is, you know, when we did our crystal ball predictions. We talked about it. They had a fuck ton of cap room, fuck mm-hmm. ton. So they got they have the ability with high draft capital because they were so bad this last year, and a ton of money to uh, correct. What they're doing here in the uh, in the off season, so yeah, definitely uh, it's going to hinge on how you value Drake May, based on what they do in free agency in the draft and what they surround him with. If they do nothing. I love you, Drake, but uh, hard pass, man. <laughs> right. hard it's going to be going to be tough. What about you, Fizzle with May? Uh, I like Drake May, man, but I'm just not a New England fan, man. If if it comes to me, I'm taking Marvin Harrison over Drake May. Whoever goes to New England. I, I don't want no parts of them. So I'll be honest. If if uh Bob Harrison goes, I'm a it depends on where Drake May would go. I mean, he could go to um New York, could go to uh you could slide a little bit uh Seattle. I mean it's a couple of teams. Um probably not, not Seattle, you probably go before them, but I mean Atlanta. Atlanta. Yeah. yeah, Atlanta. So I just don't like New England right now. Now I think they can build, like Mike said, they got cap space, they can fix some stuff up but i think whatever players go there the rookie season won't show the impact of who they are as a player it's going to take a little bit of time to me Mm -hmm. um so anybody that goes to new england i'm gonna hold off this year i try to buy next season in the off season or something yeah i think it's going to really depend on what weapons they get him there they they have to upgrade because they just are so bare at receiver tight end running back whatever it is so um next one up for arizona cardinals marvin harrison jr this has pretty much been a consensus pick in most of these mocks um i i mean we don't have to talk about this one too much but harrison jr lined up with kyler murray you know people in the comments have talked about they would take harrison 101 overall in their super flex drafts i could definitely see it would i do it personally probably not but what would you guys? Would you guys take Harrison one hundred and one overall in a super flex draft? In certain situations, yeah, I'd say okay. probably about like thirty five, forty percent of my leagues have that because I'm already set at quarterback. Uh, I'm just about to sell yeah. everything else. Um, like certain formats lend myself to like if I've got pretty two uh, two pretty good decent quarterbacks, I may just be that rookie wide receiver, that rookie. And if you're talking about a position that could come in and absolutely dominate, I mean, right. look at how many of these rookies produce, right? Zay Flowers produced at a high level. Puka Nakua blew the fucking doors off everything. We've had uh, Jamar Chase-like seasons, Justin Jefferson seasons here in the past. So as far as, like, dynasty contender where I'm in, like, my timeline, I just so happen to have the 101. Could I just go for the value and take quarterback? Yeah, but a lot of those I'm probably going to look at and go, fucking marv just give me the layup i'll take the wide receiver and, and move on because i'm decent at quarterback but yeah. if you're hurting that quarterback at all or you're like just starting a rebuild you, I, I couldn't recommend you taking marv before one of the quarterbacks right yeah i mean i'm actually taking marvin one of my leagues it's already established i already let him know taking marv 101 i got the 101 <laughs> doesn't matter 
Um, but me personally, like like Mike just said, it depends on the circumstances. Um, but I feel like a lot of people are going to be really stuck at that one on one, and uh, they're not going to know what to do. Some of them might even try try to trade back one spot just so somebody else can make their mind up for them. Um, it's right. going to be tough, especially come draft day, because it looked good now. But on draft day, you staring at that one on one, and you got Caleb, Jaden, and Marv. Man, it's, it's you don't want to be the guy that messes up that one on one. So I think it's it's going to be a uh, you know, a lot of toes curl, man. A lot of sweat coming down heads, man, on that day. So, I, me personally, though, I would take my one-on-one -on -one if my circumstances was right, for sure. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, I see a lot more people talking about that, so definitely a possibility. Uh, number five overall for Mel, he's got Brock Bowers uh, to the L.A. Chargers. I, I, we all agree that Brock Bowers is a really, really good talent. I just don't know if I can get behind taking a tight end at five overall, especially when you have a Malik neighbor sitting there, a Roma Dunze sitting there. Um, they're probably going to cut Mike Williams. They can cut Keenan Allen. They're like uh, $55 million over the cap right now. It's even more than... Uh, what some people have said 40 million so they gotta really cut some players new gm new coach coming in sounds like harbaugh is the favorite to go there um i just don't see him taking a tight end five overall but if this happens to go with justin herbert i think he's a locked in you know top six or seven dynasty pick for sure for most people yeah he kind of just walks into like that tight end two overall role like right out the gate if right. this were to happen um and then people will have the conversation like do you take them four do you take them five do you take them three uh people will lose their mind over it, which is perfect for me because i don't really give a shit about most tight ends so right. go ahead and take them there might be like a few handful of situations where i kind of got a sneaky feeling that you know oh i know a chargers fan in this league like or i know mm -hmm. that the guy drafting after me really wants brock bowers i right. Because I actually want the guy that you're going to take, but, you know, I'll take Browers and, right. you know, hey, give me a plus, you know, give me a second too, and we'll just flip-flop here, buddy. You know, yeah, that absolutely. kind of thing. But as far as actually doing it on my Dynasty team, it no. <laughs> no right. And I'm with you, Eric, too. Like, from the NFL standpoint, it seems like a stupid, stupid move for the, the Chargers to be like, Brock Bowers is what's going to fix this whole thing. <laughs> yeah, that. no. Like... I could see taking neighbors or taking a Dunze, whoever you like the best there, um, yeah. for sure. But taking Bowers, I'd rather take uh, Joe Alt or Fashanu over Fix Brock the Bowers offensive personally. Line, get yeah. the running game cranked up, right? Yeah, because then you'd have Slater and one of these guys as your two bookends. Like that's just like what the Lions have with Decker and Sewell on their outsides. Like I'll, I'd rather do that personally than take a a tight end there like i could if they really want a tight end they can take jatavian sanders with their second round pick and yeah you're losing a little bit off of what bowers but not that much i mean the the falcons did this a couple of years ago and how much did it change their team outlook well they also didn't have a fucking i was about to say they ain't had justin herbert come on man get pick get piss some love mike man you know that's my guy man. Uh, even even this year even this year though like it was the drake london is the one who changed that offense for the better it yeah. made it more efficient, so it wasn't uh, Kyle Pitts. <laughs> right, right. All right, free no, Pitts, it. man. Get him in the dollars. We take care of him, man. <laughs> All right, next up, number six to the New York Giants, Malik Neighbors. Man, I think, I think the Giants have a very, very interesting dilemma here. Yes, they need Malik Neighbors, that super talented uh, wide receiver, or they could really take the top offensive tackle in the draft and finally fix that offensive line. Kind of like the same conversation I just had with the bookends. If you take Joe Alter for Shanu to go with Andrew Thomas, really set up those tackles. You can move Evan Neal into guard. He did play guard at, at Alabama for a little bit. Maybe he fits better at guard for them and is not a fucking bust at tackle like he is right now. What would you guys think I, about that? I, I'm taking Joe Alter if I'm the, the Giants, man. I'm Okay. They need yeah. offensive line help too, but they need weapons in their receiving yeah. game. Yeah, I mean they they That's need really both. Fun. Honestly, their offensive I mean, line has been dog you, you shit. You can start by re-signing Saquon Barkley, man. Pay the guy for all the work he put in, man. That's 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 your weapon right there. I mean, mm -hmm. Daniel Jones has. If you're gonna keep Daniel Jones, because all the other quarterbacks are gone, he got to stand up. All those weapons won't do nothing for him. 
Right. I I think they have to keep Daniel Jones. Like the cap hit to yeah. trade him is just yeah. too much. So I think they're kind of stuck with having to play him one more season. Please get him somebody else to throw to then. Yeah. Oh no, then yeah, I, I agree with that. I just think that they got to address that O line. But I'm with you though. He got to get somebody else. I think I think I personally would go with the offensive tackle. Yes, Neighbors is an amazing athlete and all that. I think I would take the number one offensive tackle and then the likelihood at my second round pick that I can get another one of these receivers because there's so damn many in this draft. Um, you know, I could get Xavier Worthy, Troy Franklin, name whoever at the bottom of, you know, the draft there for wide receivers. I think I would take that route and then, you know, go with neighbors and then the second off, you know, another offensive tackle I'd get is probably not as good as anywhere near Joe Alter for Sean. I kind of like the depth of this offensive tackle class. Not good. Not gonna I, lie. I think th- that they're going to get sucked up, though, is my is my feeling. Mm-hmm. Whereas wide receiver, it's literally like 15, 20 deep. Where offensive tackle, yeah, there's, you know, six, seven good ones. But I think they're all going to go in the first round before the Giants can pick again in the second round is kind of what my feeling is. I think they're both very deep. But the one thing that you do have going for you, in your opinion, Eric, is the free agent class. Mm-hmm. Is deep at wide receiver. It's not deep at tackle. Right? So there's True, not yeah. a lot of bookend tackles coming available in free agency. So, yeah. you know, they, they could also just go that route where they address tackle early. And then, like, yes, the wide receivers may be deep, but maybe they don't go there. Maybe they address it in free agency. And bring yeah. some I mean, but they drive so high in the second round that they could still get a Troy Franklin or something that, mm-hmm. that could make up for the loss at not taking neighbors so early. Yeah, that was, that was my thinking, yep. Uh, number seven, Joe Alt to the Titans. I think that's a lock. Like Titans have to get an offensive tackle. Other than maybe the Giants, Chargers, they should be in a good spot to get the first or second offensive tackle. I think the Titans, you'll see in every single mock that they're going to be locked into an offensive tackle most likely. So I like that. Uh, number nine, Chicago Bears. He has Rome Adunze going to uh, the Bears to pair with Caleb Williams. Uh, what would you guys think of the Caleb and Roma Dunze pair? Uh, I would be very excited about it. Uh, you know, I kind of said that if this happened with Jaden Daniels, I'd take him over it, but you'd have a tough one. Caleb is a great prospect at quarterback, and he would have Cole Komet, he would have DJ Moore, and now he would have mm-hmm. Roma Dunze. <laughs> That's a pretty deadly combination of, of weapons that he has. So, uh, yeah, and you can just try it out, you know, Herbert or Roshan or – Deontay Foreman, whoever the yeah, fuck you want. Yeah, I mean, want you can get back. a no running back cares. later on yeah, if no you want cares. one, but their running backs right now are, are more than fine. And their offensive line played much better, like was yes. much improved. Um, so, yeah, this would be a, a pretty deadly combination. That'd be very good. Yeah. And Dunze doesn't have to come in and be the alpha right out the gates, uh, which is, is yeah, kind of Yeah, he can nice kind of be like um, Addison to Justin Jefferson. He complements what DJ Moore does quite a bit right. too, right? Right. Uh, he's that bigger body guy. But he's got enough speed. Uh, he still has some yak ability, but he is a big play threat down the field. DJ Moore is very deadly in the intermediate with his mm-hmm. yak ability. He can get down the field too. Don't don't discredit DJ Moore, the god. But uh, perfect compliment, right? Not two guys that are going to eat into each other's workload because it's like, all right, you get the deep stuff, you know, we get just the possession routes, and then DJ Moore, yeah, we're going to work in that intermediate zone screens, that kind of stuff. Right. What about you, Fizz? Oh yeah, slam dunk pick right there, I mean, man. Um, yeah, that's that's a great pick for the Bears. Yeah, that would. Uh, I might have to do the real life Kermit Jeff with that one. With the <laughs> that that's a pick I wish they would have made for Justin Fields, but you know, with you moving on from him and getting yeah. a, another rookie quarterback, this is how you surround him with talent. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, they didn't do it with Fields, but hopefully, they do it with Caleb though. Uh, next one up, number 10, the Jets, Olaf Ashanu, offensive tackle, Penn State. Jets are going to be another one that's um, always looking for an offensive tackle in these mocks, so I agree with that. Uh, next offensive weapon, Saints, number 14, taking Brian Thomas Jr. from LSU. Pair up uh, with Derek Carr and Olave uh, with Brian Thomas Jr. So I'd, I'd like that one uh, personally, too, if this were to happen, that he stay at home at LSU, gives um, – the Saints, a bona fide number two wide receiver target there next to Olave. Uh, Shahid can still do his thing, so I would really like this pick. Love it. Love the yeah. pick. Love love the player, Brian yeah. Thomas. Again, another situation where the, the two wide receivers would complement each other 
very well. And uh, they're not getting rid of Derek Carr. They're not going away from him, so yeah. might as well make his weapons better. They're going to have a tough time doing it, too, because they're another team that's just, like, getting boned by the cap now. All those yeah. years of pushing in over and over and kicking the can down the road. <laughs> now yeah. you really got to start bringing in talent through the draft. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I like that pick. I just don't like Carr, but the pick is <laughs> right. solid, so it, it fits the team needs for sure. Yeah, they're stuck with cars, unfortunately. Yeah, so. yeah, they are. As long as Dennis Allen there, he ain't let him go nowhere. Yep. Uh, number 15, this one's interesting. To the Indianapolis Colts, Keon Coleman, the wide receiver from Florida State, fizzles Florida State Seminoles. Man, can you imagine having Pittman Jr. and Keon Coleman with Anthony Richardson, like just two behemoths on the outside. That's That would be really interesting. Josh Downs, too. Josh Downs. Josh Downs, and, yeah, playing in the slot, yep. This one's a little bit sketchy, but, you know, I could wrap my mind around it. Anthony Richardson, some of his question marks have been, you know, ability to throw the football accurately um, and, and really just kind of produce from that standpoint. So what do you do for quarterbacks who struggle in there? You get a gigantic targets, right, yeah. <laughs> like with yeah. gigantic catch radiuses, and you don't make Josh Downs be that jump ball guy, right? So you make Keon Coleman do that, but... I don't know, from a fantasy outlook perspective, like I really enjoy the fact that Keon Coleman's getting love from Mel Kuyper and going this high, it's confirming some of my priors that he's not terrible, even though people try to tell me all the time he's garbage, right. <laughs> even though I don't think so. Um, but uh, the fit just doesn't feel great. Like I'd just, just slip a few more picks and go to one of these better spots where I could get even more excited. But it's nice to see the draft capital, but I do understand like kind of the process behind it, what Kuiper's thinking, at least with the uh, the A Rich and the giant target connection. But mm. uh, I'd love to see Keon somewhere else. Like give him Troy Franklin, right? <laughs> like give, right. give him one of these other wide receivers. Don't do yep. don't do Keon like that. Yeah. What do you think, Fizz? Being a Seminoles fan, would you like that? Uh, honestly, I'm with Mike, man. Uh, okay. I would love for him to just fall about nine spots, ten spots, and uh end up somewhere else like buffalo or kansas city would be perfect to me but um mm -hmm. it wouldn't be a horrible pick i just don't think that they would need him at that pick so okay. um you know i honestly i think they would go cornerback or something before they would uh take keon but not a bad not a bad spot overall i just so for selfish reasons want to see him fall a little a little further down the list okay uh, next one up, very interesting picks. 16 to the Seattle Seahawks, J.J. McCarthy, the quarterback from Michigan. Um, in Mel's writing here, he thinks um, with the way that they structured the deal, they could get out after one season. So could they just sever ties here with Geno Smith and move on to J.J. McCarthy as a starting quarterback with a new coach? Yeah, they kind of got a bridge right there. Mm -hmm. One of the things, too, like um... – uh, J.J. McCarthy is athletic, can make plays with his feet. Um, he has arm talent. Uh, I just He never was asked to do a lot, so like this is where I struggled to see what everybody else sees with him, like why he's such a locked-in first-round quarterback in a lot of people's minds. But perfect situation, though. You, you don't have to go in and carry the franchise like a Caleb Williams, a Drake May, you know, a Jaden Daniels right off the bat. We're not trying to get you to fix everything. You could actually go in and sit for – part of the year um learn behind Gino on a team friendly contract that they can get out of you know when they when the time is right good situation for him to go to to be completely honest so yeah, I mean if this was going to be the thing this is what you'd like to see out of McCarthy the downside like we saw somewhat some we did the, the mock draft show on Monday night and uh we had him going eight to the Falcons like somebody took him eight to the Falcons and that's the kind of situation that would make me shit my pants if I was a J.J. McCarthy truth or to take him in Dynasty because it's like I could, that's a lot of fucking pressure right out the gate to to fix it for a guy that I think is a little bit more developmental. I think if Atlanta hired Harbaugh, I wouldn't put it out of the question. Harbaugh would be a different story, right? Yeah. And then he'd just go ground and pound. But if they go like one of these other offensive minds that's got to do it, tough situation to do, to do. Right. Yeah, I think if, if – Michael Penix doesn't go ahead. and JJ McCarthy did. The Seattle Seahawks fans would be devastated. Me personally, um, mm -hmm. if you look at what Geno, how he's played, he's been throwing the ball. Like he hasn't been dinking and dunking. He's been airing it out for the last two years. So I think Penix can come in and mirror what Geno has done. I don't think JJ can do that. They they would have to change the whole scheme of things on offense, if you ask me. So uh, with the pick being taken, I don't like it, but um. You know, 
me personally, Penix is the only quarterback that should be in Seattle, personally. Yeah, Seattle's going to be very interesting with Waldron already gone. Obviously, Pete Carroll gone. That's going to be a new head coach, a new offensive scheme probably totally in there. So I think we kind of have to be in wait-and-see mode and see what happens there between uh, Seattle, who they hire, and then bring in. Because, I mean, they might not want Geno Smith. So I think that is an interesting spot for McCarthy. Uh, next up, J.C. Latham, offensive tackle um, from Alabama to the Bengals. Bengals always could use offensive tackle help, so I think we agree there. Uh, Troy Fatanu, the guard from Washington, going to Miami. Miami needs offensive line help. I'm good with that. Uh, Talisi Fuaga, off- offensive tackle from Oregon State to Philly at 22. Would love that. Um, Fuaga is a fucking monster. I know... Um, Dane Brugler and Mel have talked uh, talked him up quite a bit on their podcast lately, so I could see him going even higher than this. Uh, would be a good pick for the Eagles. Uh, next offensive player, Jordan Morgan, the offensive tackle to Air, uh, from Arizona to Dallas at 24. I, D- Dallas could always use offensive line. I'm good with that. Uh, Kingsley Sumataya, I'm guessing, from BYU, offensive tackle number 25 overall to Green Bay. Um Green Bay could always use offensive tackle help. I'm good with that. Tyler Guyton, another offensive tackle going to Arizona via the Houston pick. Um, you know, pair with Paris Johnson Jr. last year, get another very solid tackle to pair for Kyler Murray. Give him, you know, Kyler more time to throw to Marvin Harrison Jr. downfield. I like that. Uh, our next offensive one here, number 28 to the Buffalo Bills, Adane Mitchell, the wide receiver from Texas. Uh, big 6-4, you know, target, catches the ball down the field. What would you guys think of that one? I'm not the biggest Adonai Mitchell fan there is. Um, yeah. He's kind of got some question marks to his game. Production, mm-hmm. you know, hadn't been fantastic throughout his career. He's got some great physical traits. Um it's just something about him I'm, I'm not, like, fully on board. Uh, if this were to actually happen, though, that's just where you kind of throw your priors out the, the window, right, where you go, all right, fuck, like, what I think. Obviously, the NFL and this team think something about him, so then you got to reevaluate where you're going to put him. So mm-hmm. Buffalo would be a hell of a spot, especially because it feels like either Stefan Diggs has quit or is dust or both. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. Gabe Davis, you know, may or may not be out the door. Uh, but it is with Josh Allen, and he desperately needs some help uh, in the receiving game. So uh, it would be very interesting, and I'm, I'm sh- I'm, I would assume Adonai Mitchell would get pushed up a lot of people's boards pretty far. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, for sure. Um, Surprise, you know, not to see Xavier Worthy or something right there, but um, yeah, I mean, I'm with Mike. Um, Pretty much if anybody goes to Buffalo, it's going to be sh- shot up the uh, rankings, you know. Um, they're going to make somebody that we don't think is efficient or the best move up. So mm. if they taking them, it's a reason why they're taking them. And we just got to just roll with it and expect that he's going to show up on day one and be, you know, be solid or not day one, but, you know, be solid in that offense with that quarterback. So right. I, I trust the process with whatever they take. Next one up uh, 29. I think just like that pick, if, uh, wide receiver goes to the Kansas City Chiefs here. They have Troy Franklin from Oregon. Um, I think they're going to shoot up the boards in our rookie drafts probably like right after that Bowers pick at a 106-107. You know, you're going to probably have Franklin or uh, Adnay Mitchell going there. Uh, Troy Franklin with that speed going to Kansas City, I think that would probably shoot him above Mitchell personally. And it's not like just a Miko Hardman clone. Yeah, it's like Trey Franklin's actually good. <laughs> yeah, and he's six three and yeah. runs like that. So yeah. Uh, yeah, that would be very very exciting. Pat Mahomes gets his deep threat. It's like everything MVS does, but three thousand times better. Mm. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And you see how many times like MVS was put in situations to like have monster games or be the hero, game winner, game breaker, and he always sucked. <laughs> Right. <laughs> like you just have a wet dream thinking about what Troy Franklin could do <laughs> instead. Exactly. Now I'm with you on that. <clears throat> I like Troy Franklin in the Kansas City though. Yeah, that would be really nice for sure. And then the last pick uh, of the first round, Amarius Mims, offensive tackle from Georgia, going to San Francisco. Uh, they could definitely use another tackle, like Mike yep. talked about earlier. Their right tackle is dog shit. 
All right, we're going to go through uh, Daniel Jeremiah's and Bucky Brooks' mocks real quick here, too. Most of the same landing spots. Um, first overall, Chicago Bears, Caleb Williams. Uh, number two overall in this one, uh, DJ has him switch between Drake May and Daniel uh, Jaden Daniels, with Drake May going second to Washington and New England getting Jaden Daniels. I think I'd still be fine with um, either of those spots. I think I agree with Mike where I would probably still – prioritize Jaden Daniels a little bit just because of the rushing ability and how much rushing means in fantasy for us. The the Jaden Daniels flop here in this one for me uh, probably wouldn't be in the 101 conversation if he right. were to go to New England just because of the weapons and then the tiebreaker between him and a Drake May as far as who I would take would be same thing it was for Drake May in the, the Kuiper one. Like, what did you surround him with? Because right. if you ask Jaden Davis, yes, he may have a rushing floor, but he also may end up throwing 20 interceptions and, you know, sub 3,000 right. yards because there's nobody to throw the fucking football to. Yeah, he needs some talents on the outside with him, I think. You know, obviously he had neighbors and Thomas Jr. Um, on his outsides. He's going to need some guys for him for the, sure. The Washington thing was a little bit more, right, Dotson. And Terry McLaurin, McLaurin right. right, like uh, whatever you think about Diami Brown, you know, from a fantasy perspective, it gives a shit, but that's at least a dude like you could throw a bomb to every now and then, right? right. That, that's a weapon. That's something that New England barely has. They got right. one of those dudes right now right. <laughs> that we project. Right. See, I, I don't like to swap because I'm from this city, and the one thing I know about this city, if Drake May shows up to um, Washington and he doesn't perform, these fans are going to dog them, man. They're going to Carson Wentz, Sam Howe, flip over them. I, I've seen that happen all the time. But if Jaden Daniels here and he doesn't really perform, they're going to keep giving them shots. Because, like I said, I'm from here. I know how these fans operate. And Daniel Jones, I mean, uh, not, it's not Daniel Jones. Um, Jaden Daniel being in Washington would go a longer way with the fans. Now, I ain't just talking fantasy. I just mean, like, in real life. Because mm -hmm. um, I, I even – um. Haskins, they wanted Haskins to to really do good here. I mean, he was from here one, but right. you know, Jaden Daniels is the pick for this city and the town and the team. To me, Drake May, if he plays, they'll love him. If he doesn't, they're going they're going to hate him. I just know how these fans are around here. I think another possibility that hasn't really been brought up yet, but with this new ownership in Washington, and Obviously, Caleb Williams is from the Washington area, too. Like, exactly. They just say, fuck it. Here's like three, four first-rounders, and they just move <clears throat> all in for Caleb. Um, I could see that as a possibility, too. And Caleb would go back home. So yeah, I think if, that's a possibility. If I'm the owner of a new team, man, I want to, if I'm number two, I want the number one pick. Let me shoot my own shot. I'll figure it out and hope it, it hits. But I right. don't want to pick behind nobody. I just want to start off with the number one and bet on my guy. So. Especially because right. you got to move up one spot. It ain't like you're moving from 10 to 1. So, Yeah, I mean, they probably would still have to give up three first-rounders to move up, you know, one spot, so? give three? up the two. Yeah, I think they'd have to give up the two overall and two, you know, a 2024 or a 2025, 2026 first. I think they'd probably have to just because it's Caleb Williams and what everybody yeah. thinks about him, the but, perception. I don't know if it's worth that then, but <laughs> I just say – me personally, I want the number one pick if I'm if my first shot, my first team, you know what I'm saying? New ownership, new management. I want my I don't want to wait for somebody else to make my my pick for me. So okay. Um, next up, uh to the Chargers, Roma Dunze goes to the Chargers, and then the Giants at six take Malik Neighbors in this one as well. Uh so Adunze moves up a little bit here to go with the Chargers. Uh Adunze and Herbert together, I would absolutely love that. Much better pick than the I like that better. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm with you. And neighbors to the Giants would love that too. Uh, he had Joe Alt going to the Titans as well. So, you know, same kind of feeling here. This one, he had uh, the Jets taking Fuaga, the offensive tackle from Oregon State at they 10. Need help. Yeah, I mean, it's not basically an, a way better Makai Becton, hopefully. Um, so that would be a, a big get for them uh fashanu from penn state he has him falling to the raiders at 13 um if the raiders could get a talent like fashanu at 13 i think they'd be doing a backflip right and then it kind of signals they're probably going the vet route for their quarterback needs mm -hmm. i think this they're gonna go a vet anyway with antonio Pierce being the coach i, I think they're gonna wait it out right 
Here's an interesting one. Number 14, the New Orleans Saints select Bo Nix, quarterback from Oregon. Uh, Daniel Jeremiah says he is a big fan of Nix's game. He thinks his experience as a five-year starter is a positive for him. As he heads to the next level, he would be a plug-and-play starter in New Orleans. I'm not confident the Saints view Derek Carr as the answer. They just won't. They can't get out of Derek Carr for a year. So I think he's going to have to kind of revisit this after he learns that, that hey, they can't get Derek Carr out of there. So I don't um, understand this one. Yeah, I'm as not long as Dennis Allen is there, Derek Carr ain't going nowhere. That's his guy. They even talking about bringing John Gruden back to be yeah, as the coordinator. Yeah, they're going to take care of him as long as Dennis Allen is. New yeah. coach, new quarterback, but that ain't going to happen. I don't see it. Yeah, I think that one will have to get revisited. 15, he has the Indianapolis Colts selecting Brock Bowers. Um, I talked a lot about the four-way fuck fest at tight end last year for the Colts and just add Brock Bowers to it now with Jelani Woods and Will Mallory and Kylan Granson. Yes, Bowers is 35 million times more talented than any of those guys, but I, I don't know if I like this one as much. If, if... They got rid of the four-way fuck fest, right. and it became the Brock Bauer show. I love the fit. Yeah, I love it. If, if I'm with you, Mike, I, I love that pick. Much better than the Keon Coleman pick of the last right. one. Right. Like, that one would make sense. Get get A. Rich's safety blanket to go with his safety blanket wide receiver. Right. And right. there we go. But I'm with you, Eric. If they continue this shit, kept trotting <laughs> out Ogletree and Kylan Granson and Jelani yeah. Woods and just – Mo Alley Cox, slow Alley Cox. <laughs> like I would yeah. hate it. Like what are you taking? What are you taking Brock Powers for? If this is what you're gonna fucking do with it, I, stop it. I don't think he could reach his potential with the coach, but I like mm-hmm. the pick. You know, as a team collective. Right, I agree with that. Um, number sixteen, the Seattle Seahawks take Troy Fonten- Fontenu, offensive tackle, Washington. Uh, Bengals again take J.C. Latham, offensive tackle from Bama. Bengals definitely could use offensive linemen. Uh, Amarius Mims, and this one goes number 20 overall to the Steelers, giving the Steelers another offensive tackle to pair with last year's Georgia tackle they took in Broderick Jones. Two tackles they took last year. Yeah, and Darnell Washington as well. Yeah, don't forget the other left tackle they took. This one, I don't see this one happening, but would it surprise me? No. Miami Dolphins taking Brian Thomas Jr., the wide receiver from LSU. I think the smart play for Miami is to keep building that offensive lineup. I think they have plenty of weapons, like adding like a third luxury weapon like that. Uh, I don't know if I love it. Now, if it was Brock Bowers to Miami, I could definitely get it behind that. Uh, just adding a third receiver, though, when they really don't use three receivers, I'm not sure about this one. They they haven't used three receivers, and I'm with you, Eric, too, but then part of me looks at it and goes, well, maybe they haven't used a third receiving weapon because they've all been shit. Um, River Craycraft, Braxton Berrios, Chase Claypool, Julian Hill, Durham Smythe, like Robbie none of those guys. Anderson, that, right. you know, Robbie, chosen Anderson. Cho- or Robbie chose whatever the fuck his name is at this point. Right? That's like, Robbie Anderson. The chosen one. The chosen one. The chosen one. Either way. Chosen one to get cut. Maybe that's season. why they haven't used a third receiving weapon is because they've all been ass. Um, right. But, yeah, the, the, like, would they actually, you know, would McDaniel go, like, you know what we need? That third one. Like, now what do you cover, bitches? <laughs> right. <laughs> like, now what are you going to do? And uh, the write-up with DJ, too. Like, he's different than the other two. Like, he's still mm-hmm. fast, and he can get down the field and stretch. But he has some size to him, which they yeah. really don't have right now. I just think if they were to do that, they would have at least tried Chase Claypool to do that. Because Chase Claypool's yes, that didn't. big weapon. I mean, obviously... It's Chase Claypool. It's not, you know, the talent of Brian Thomas Jr., but it's not like Claypool was completely terrible in his career. But if they did that, would they be embracing Tyreek Hill to actually leave in, in a year or so, like he said he would? Yeah, could that's be. a possibility, too, if they maybe have um, that, information. That would be that the only reason have. I could yeah, see them doing it. Yeah. Uh, Philadelphia taking Tyler Guyton, the offensive tackle from Oklahoma. Getting another offensive tackle from Oklahoma, like Lane Johnson, I could see that. Uh, Jordan Morgan, offensive tackle to Dallas again. I think Mel had that as well. Um, Green Bay Packers taking Graham Barton, the Duke offensive lineman, uh, can play interior, play all over, uh, all five spots, according to Daniel Jeremiah. 
Um, next offensive player, Devontez Walker to Kansas City at 29. I would like this one a lot, too. I love Devontez Walker. The problem is we didn't see a lot of him, and the yeah. nation didn't see a lot of him. The NCAA really fucked him, and then before that he played at a Mac school, so nobody really cared. Well, that could be um, good for our drafts when he falls right into our laps and they yeah. take all these other players. Yeah. Um, he's going to be interesting, too. Like, I think this is one of the guys that the pre-draft process is going to be massive for him. Like, how he yeah. performs, how's the combine look, how's his interview go, and if the Kansas City Chiefs, of all teams, were to pull the trigger on a Devontae Walker, holy Santa Claus shit. Like, yeah. for all of us who are doing pre-NFL rookie drafts, uh, the, all the Devontae Walker shares just go to the moon. Uh, for those people who actually know about him and, and don't have to dive into Dynasty Reddit or whatever to figure out who the fuck this guy is and be all like, right. yeah, <laughs> let's go 108, 109, I'm getting fucking Walker. Let's do yeah, it. So, yeah, that'd be, nice. that'd be a hell of one. Devontae Walker is a dynamite wide receiver. You got anything on Walker Fizz? Oh, yeah. And I was going to say that the, the process of, like Mike said, the, the combine and the testing, and that's really what's going to um, make this pick, make or break this pick. But right. him going to the Chiefs, as far as dynasty or fantasy goes, it won't even matter who who is what his name is. He's going to shoot up at least three spots in every league. Right. So And, and then the last one here for uh, Daniel's mock at 32, he has the Ravens taking wide receiver Troy Franklin from Oregon, would give uh, Lamar that explosive outside weapon. I think um, that would be pretty interesting to pair with. Say Flowers does a lot of the underneath stuff, um, and then pair up Franklin there. I think that could be a really good pairing. That'd be a good one. That yeah. offense would be, uh, as Lamar keeps progressing too, uh, we saw Todd Munkin in his first year made this offense look completely different than what we've seen in Lamar's tenure, which is was a nice change. Right. Um, and I think it'd be really great for Baltimore too, just kind of go like, yeah, we we really don't need to run the football. Like we're we're good. Like if we're gonna run the football, it's gonna be Lamar creating. Other than like, here's a handoff to some shitty running back that nobody cares about. But we got the uh, we got all the possession routes. The underneath, like you said, was was say Flowers. Mark Andrews is elite. Isaiah likely came on at the end of the season, replacing him. So you have a second tight end, and then to get that over the top, holy fuck, speed, yeah. uh, deep bomb when Lamar wants to take his shots. I like the fit. Fantasy wise, I don't know how like great of a receiver Troy Franklin would be for your fantasy teams like, as far as consistency goes, because he's going to go into a you know number three role like right out the gate. So it'd be a little bit tough, but for the NFL purposes, for Lamar, like I would get excited about the efficiency of that offense going up and and what Lamar could do for you. Right. Yeah. Um, all I right. So on to uh, to Bucky's here quickly. First four picks are the same as Daniels, Caleb, Drake, May, Jaden Daniels, Marvin Harrison Jr. I'm good with that. Uh, at five here, Bucky has Bowers going to the Chargers. We've kind of talked about that one already. Um, at six, he has the Giants taking Roma Dunze in this one. So uh, Dunze would be the Giants pick here. Um, any thoughts on on a Dunze to the Giants? The the only thing that would change, like I, I love neighbors. Um, but I also really love Roma Dunze. But yeah, if you told me, too. whichever one went to the Giants, that would be my de facto. Like, whichever was the next wide receiver off the board is my de facto next wide receiver off the board with, with who I'm taking in Dynasty drafts. Right. Agreed. You go yeah. with uh, Odunze? Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm with what Mike said. Um, so when you say whichever one goes to the Giants, are you saying you would take the one that goes after, or would you stick with Odunze? No, I would stick with what the NFL draft capital would tell you. Oh, okay, right? okay. If it's this far apart, right? I don't know how far. I haven't scrolled that far, how far down he has neighbors. But if the Giants have their choice of both of them and they go, well, we want a Dunze, like I think a Dunze right now in the pre-draft process for me is close to neighbors. I don't know if okay. people want to hear that, but a Dunze is really fucking good. So yeah. I just go, well, the NFL liked him a little bit better. The Giants did. He also just, the Giants situation at least, um, what I talked about earlier is he just steps right into alpha number one monster target potential because there's literally nobody else there no, at all. Yeah, yeah. I'm with you. Uh, the Titans in this one, he has Fashanu, the offensive tackle from Penn State, going to the Titans in this one. Uh, he has at number 10, the Jets getting Joe Alt there. I think if the Jets would do an absolute backflip, if Joe Alt fell to them at 10, I don't see that happening though. Um, hey, hey Eric, I don't mean to cut you off, but what do we think about the Atlanta Falcons taking Dallas Turner instead of like a quarterback right there? 
Would that uh, mean they already had a guy? Or yeah, I would probably think they ha they would have their guy um, there. That they just value that that edge pass rusher. I, I think it's kind of what they're getting at there. Um, probably traded for Fields or signed Kirk Cousins what? or whatever the hell they did. You know, I, that's kind of what I would be thinking. All right, I'm with you. I'm just it is look when I looked at it, I was like, oh okay. Was yeah, I just I don't know like if they wanted JJ McCarthy or something like that, I think they could they'd be able to trade back a couple <clears> spots <throat> and let mm -hmm. somebody come up and jump the Jets for Joe Alt or whatever. I I could see that. Yeah. Um that's probably what I would be thinking. No, I'm with you. Um next one up is uh, the Raiders taking Talese Fulaga, the offensive tackle from Oregon State. That just seems like a Raiders player, big mauling offensive tackle. Uh, the Saints take J.C. Latham, the offensive tackle from Bama, in this one, giving Derek Carr another offensive tackle. The Saints' offensive line wasn't that great this season, so I could see that. 15, he has the Indianapolis Colts selecting Malik Neighbors. So what do you think about Malik falling to 15? If Michael Pittman Jr. were to stay, and he's the number two option, like I think this really hurts neighbors' upside potential. Yeah, um, and really hurts like where I would take him in rookie drafts. Like I'd be a little bit more cooler on him. And now he's kind of lumped in with, well, who'd the Bills take? Who'd who'd the Chiefs take? Like mm -hmm. that's the kind of territory instead of separating himself so so much in some of these other mocks. Now, if Pittman was gone, and they took neighbors. Holy Santa Claus shit. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, everything I just said about a Dunze, like, ooh, I'm going to have a real tough time because he's going to walk in playing with A. Rich as the number one weapon, too. Like, this mm -hmm. this would set up for a hell of a, a debate in the uh, the rookie drafts. Like, a Dunze or neighbors, a Dunze or neighbors. Who are you taking? One went at 15. The other one was six. Like, who right. you want? Both are going to step into number one alpha roles, so. Be, be be very interesting but if it was with Pittman, all of a sudden it's like a completely different conversation where you're not as excited i think when it comes to draft day though neighbors is there's just no way he falls that far um unless something happens like atlanta would take him i think the bears would take him i think the jets are in possibility denver definitely needs a receiver the raiders could use a receiver the saints could use a receiver so i think neighbors would go to one of those teams before he fell this far I would hope so, but you know, I also didn't think CeeDee Lamb was gonna fall as far as he did. Right, he yeah, got drafted too, right? And I'm like yeah. begging the, the 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 Eagles to trade up and of course uh it's gonna go to fucking Fizzles Dallas Cowboys and right. haunt me for But you got Jay Norega, man. You got Jay Norega one of that. <laughs> yeah, new New England Patriot, great New England Rager. <laughs> Stop it. I hate uh, you guys. Uh, <laughs> Number 18, he has the Bengals taking Brian Thomas Jr., and I think he's kind of banking on T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd leaving. So Brian Thomas Jr. kind of just takes the T. Higgins role. What would you guys think of that? He, he's he got the T. Higgins size. He's mm -hmm. a lot faster than T. Um, I think right now, at least at this point. Less I'm, injured than fucking T, too. Yeah, yeah. For now. For now. <laughs> For now. Maybe it's a Bengals thing. Yeah, uh, yeah I would – I would be extremely excited that Brian Thomas went to the Bengals. That'd be a hell of a pick. Would you take Thomas over Neighbors in this situation, in this if, draft? If Michael Pittman Jr. was still there, yes. Interesting. Okay. What about you, Fizz? Yeah, I like it. Um, I mean, I think they take Brian Thomas, they might as well get Odell Beckham and go get Clyde Edwards and just name themselves at the LSU Tigers or something. I, I, I think <laughs> CEH going there is a very good possibility. That's, that's awesome. what I'm saying, man. This yeah. be the LSU Tigers. But um, now I like Brian Thomas there. Even if T. Higgins is there, I still like Brian Thomas there. Because T. Right. is only going to be there probably one year. I don't see him staying longer than one. So uh, whatever he doesn't do his rookie year, you know, that's why we play Dynasty. So right. um, he'd be a buy low when somebody don't want him because they, he didn't do some of his rookie year. So right. I like that move. Uh, 19, he has the Rams taking Bo Nix in this one. He'd sit a season behind Stafford there, um, and then Bo Nix could probably take over after that. I think this would probably be Bo Nix's best landing spot for him to kind of just sit for a season behind like a Matt Stafford. Um, I'd probably still, if this happened, I would take Nix in the first round of my rookie draft, probably at the back end, 110 to 112 range. Um, I would be okay with it and just kind of sit for a year behind um, Stafford, and then you get 
you know, Sean McVay and you get his learning tree and his coaching to uh, work up Bo Nix. I think this is probably Bo Nix's best landing spot. The only downside is you have to prepare yourself mentally to ride out the roller coaster just like with the Jordan Love situation. I was just about to right. say, are we yeah. sure it's going to be one year? I don't know. Because, well, you know, what if they come back and they have pretty good success, right? They're back in the playoffs or maybe they're in a, a conference championship, championship game and yep. Stafford's like, I'm still running this shit back the next year and then the next year and him and McVay just keep going at it and all of a sudden you're in year four of Bo Nix and you're like, you know, he's barely worth a second at this point. Right. These people are allowed, the same Jordan Love thing. So you just kind of got to be con- cognizant of it. Like, can I endure this on my roster just going Fuck, fuck, fuck. Stafford, retire already. Just leave. So keep that in mind with like a Rams potential quarterback, whether it's McCarthy or Knicks or Penix or whoever the fuck it may be. If they were to do that, you just got to mentally prepare yourself. But I'm with you. I'm still taking them for the, the positional value just in case. I, I think if they didn't have a season they had this year, this would be a logistic pick. But I think they're going to try to build to win with what they right. just did. Um, they had a bad season, then, of course, we're going to get a quarterback, let them groom them, teach them the game. But I don't see them going into this offseason saying we want to groom anybody. I think they – I mean, they they one of the teams that have traded away all their picks just to win one championship. So right. I don't see them wanting to groom anything in the first round. Whatever they right. take first round should touch the field the first game for them. So Yeah, I agree with I, you. I don't trust the pick. Yep. Uh, 20, he's got the Steelers taking Amarius Mims, tr- tackle from Georgia again, just like DJ did. Jackson Powers Johnson, offensive lineman from Oregon to Miami. Uh, like that pick. Anything for uh, Miami's offensive line, I like. Font- Fontananu from Was- Washington, offensive tackle going to Houston um, at 23. Protect CJ Stroud at all costs. Like that. Tyler Guyton, offensive tackle from Oklahoma to Dallas in this one. I like that. 26, Tampa Bay takes Keon Coleman. Um, if Mike Evans does leave, Coleman could maybe take that spot? Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's your replacement. I, yeah. I think he could take Chris Godwin's spot too, though, if Mike stays. Yep. Honestly. Either one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is kind of like we, we were talking earlier about the uh, the Bucks with Baker. Um, like, he's definitely coming back. We just don't know what the weapon situation is going to look like. We don't know what the rest of the team's going to look like with having to pay Baker. Um, and then, like, you got that the free agents at the wide receiver spot. Keon Coleman to, to Bucks, right? Stays in the state of Florida. Yeah. I get behind that as yeah. one of those guys' replacement. Mike Evans would probably be the most, like, oh, yeah, this is, like, the one-for-one replacement. You know, this is the Mike yeah. six four to six five, But, you know, I think Keon's a little bit faster. Jump ball ability, Mike Evans is a god, uh, but yeah, Keon Mike Evans can, be. <laughs> can be, can right. be. We we've seen flashes. Uh, highlight reel is pretty nuts, so I would I wouldn't mind that one. Right. Yeah, it'd be solid. Um. All right, we'll finish this off here real quick. Arizona takes Jordan Morgan, offensive tackle from Arizona. Um, and that's it for offense. So that was quick. Uh, you got to touch on the best pick of the draft, right? Buffalo Bills take Cooper DeJean. Yeah, uh, I think he was like uh, 17th to Jacksonville in one of the other ones. I'd get excited. Uh, I want to see him play on a good team, man. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Sean definitely. McDermott's defense, Cooper DeGene. Yep. Let's go. Definitely. That would be uh, a nice one. But, yeah, uh, pretty good couple mocks there. I mean, we're going to do more of these as they come out over the off season. Um Always interesting to kind of see what – you know, the big guys in the industry are, are hearing and thinking um, right from the beginning here kind of gives you some ideas for your own mocks and some own ideas to think about. So uh, definitely always like going over these. Overall, though, between the three, I like what Kuiper did probably the most. Like that, yeah, a lot of so. what he did made the most sense to me. The NFL.com guys, I was a little bit like, what, what are we doing? But I do understand, like, the Bo Nix thing. Um, there are some pretty big fans of Bo Nix out there. I'm not, but maybe it's uh, that's a signal you got to go do a little bit more uh, Bo Nix research, dive into him a little bit more. Yeah, Bucky didn't even have McCarthy in his first round, I don't think. Mm. So that's interesting. No McCarthy. Yep. I, mean, uh, I ain't seeing no Penix in no first rounds either, man. I don't know. Nope. Yeah, I think he's kind of going to be locked into a lot of second rounds and – um, depending on his landing spot, I'll definitely be interested in Penix for sure. All right, we're ready to play uh, America's favorite game, and then we'll get on out of here. 
Come on, man. It's bear shit in the woods. <laughs> Sometimes. Yes, they do. All right. Since Fizzle's on here, we got the music guy. Who's like your favorite artist, band, in music? Uh, currently or overall? It's, o- you know, it's overall. a lot of different. You could do currently and overall. You can do them both if you want. Or okay. maybe somebody who influenced you, you know, because you're doing all the, okay. you did the intro yeah. for here. Whatever you want to um, talk about. Well, honestly, these days, I listen to podcasts. I don't even listen to uh, the music. I, I, I don't know any new bands or songs yeah. or anything. <laughs> yeah, it's really hard for me to record music because I'm like, man, I haven't listened to any inspirational music to even, you know, right, write to. Right. But, um, <laughs> Well, no, man. Um, I grew up on Michael Jackson, man. That's for sure. So I'm going to give MJ some love. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, but overall, I mean, Tupac is always my guy. Uh, probably going to always be my guy. And uh, from the Tupac transition, it was Lil Wayne, that 2004, 5, 6, 7 era. And um, uh, I listen to a lot of South music. Here in D.C., man, we, we are the East Coast, but we are a lot of like the south we say like people say we talk southern like y'all and stuff like that so uh-huh. um i listen to a lot of memphis artists uh three six mafia project pat um stuff like that but currently if it ain't j cole i probably ain't listening right now so j cole is probably my number one he just don't put out enough music but right right um, i'm gonna rock with j cole we talking current so from tupac lil wayne three six project pat j cole those my lineup okay what about you uh mike Man, that's a tough question, too, when you get to music. It's kind of like movies because right. I'm so, uh, the, the proper word is eclectic. I learned that one from Sister Act, too. Uh, eclectic, right? I like a little bit of everything. Um, <laughs> and I really mean that. Like, some of my playlists are some of the most fucked up things you ever will. We'll see, right? Yeah, you uh, got some Metallica, and then it switches to some Backstreet Boys. I get Right, it. and then there's hip-hop, and then literally it will go to, like, you know, 90s country alan jackson shit to yep. to the temptations i'm a big fan of the temptations that started with my my grandma uh-huh. uh she had an old record player and that like one of my first memories was fucking around with that thing and putting on a temptations record and being like oh yeah so i do have like i love motown stuff um so i i kind of give you a list right temptations i do love that i'm a big fan of credence you know that vietnam era yeah rock um really do enjoy that quite a bit uh modern rock you know uh metallica at least for modern for my time because i'm old as fuck <laughs> um but uh hip-hop eminem i mean i've grown up on eminem my entire life uh, yeah literally uh, i've spent more years with eminem as an artist influenced my life than i have you know not had eminem so yeah. the, the the shifted i get so fucking old he's, he's around Right now, for whatever reason, though, like Chris Stapleton, Morgan Wallen, that shit, like I'm just all aboard. And uh, because Morgan Wallen has done so much stuff with like Lil Durk, for whatever reason, like I'm I'm big into Lil Durk right now. <laughs> That's my thing. I don't know why. So yeah, I'm kind of all over the map. But those are some of my favorites. And Fizz hit on one. You know, I lived in Memphis for a while, so Three Six Mafia, Project Pad, Juicy Juicy J, Lil White, hey, like, that go, shit Mike, is on fucking my repeat. <laughs> uh, Atlanta rap. Do I remember the golden days, early 2000s? You know, just all the Atlanta rappers coming out. Oh, welcome to Atlanta where the players play. <laughs> so that, that shit yeah, always influences. Yeah, yeah. uh, T.I., right? T.I., another yeah. Atlanta rapper. Grew up on T.I. So, yeah, I'm kind of all over the map with music, but those are some of my favorites that stand out. Hey, Mike, I've been waiting to hear one person, man. You ain't say their name yet, man. I'm just saying. Oh, who's that? Right. Your boy, man. I'm just saying, you've been cranking my music the hardest, though, man. I got to be one of your favorite artists. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> my bad, it, Fizz. Well, that just, that just goes, man. I'm just saying, man. You know, like, that is in rotation, right? It also I goes know. in the playlist. So there are times, Fizz, where your music comes on. You know, I bump that on my way into work, and then the next thing that comes on will be, like, Alan Jackson. So just know, like, you're right <laughs> next to each other. <laughs> nah, I know. And I just had to give you a shout-out because you always shout me out. So I, I go from singing know. the words to they wrote me off to uh, where I come from. It's corn, bread, and chicken. <laughs> <laughs> I'm literally all over the map. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm like Mike. I'm all over the map, too. But it's more of, like, a lot of the older stuff, like any of the newer stuff nowadays, I I just don't listen to any music at all. I'm all podcast all day. Like my old job, I used to be able to listen to podcasts eight hours a day. So that's all I would ever listen to. Um, but like some of the stuff that like 
like when I was in school was like the TRL fucking haven, you know, that was like TRL was the big thing. You'd go home, rush home and watch MTV for TRL every day. And um so a lot of those bands in that in that era is what I'm more into. Um, so like just some I'll just go through my fucking iTunes real quick here. So like I have a shit ton of Drake on there. I've always liked Drake. Uh Eminem, just like um Mike said, Eminem's a good one. Um, I've r- always really liked Frank Sinatra stuff, so I, I have some Frank Sinatra stuff. Um, let's see, what other good ones do I have in here that I like? Linkin Park, Corn. those were the TRL days. Those guys were big. Limp Biscuit was big in that day. Still listen to a lot of those. Definitely, definitely. Um, I, I like, even though he's so weird now, but I I did like Kanye. Kanye ha, has some good songs. I like Kid Rock. I like um, for older bands like Kiss and uh, Rolling Stones. Love those guys. Uh, Little Wayne, definitely really like him. Got a bunch of his stuff on here. Metallica. Uh, one of my favorites is Three Days Grace. That's probably one of my favorites. Puddle of Mud is another good one that I always listen to. Um... Uh, that's probably about it that I'm seeing on here. For I mean, there's so much stuff you could touch on with music, man. I I ain't oh, even got okay. it with the rap. I ain't even touched my other list, but right, right. Yeah, music, music is a moody thing. You know, how I yeah. feel that day is what I listen to. I can't just. Yeah, exactly. I'm I'm the same way too. It just kind of depends on what I'm feeling that day, or mm-hmm. maybe I I hear us, you know. Uh, <laughs> that certain band song on the, on the radio or something or in the, you know, at my store that I work at, I hear it on the radio. I'm like, Oh man, I haven't listened to them in a long time yeah. and I'll go listen yeah. to that music. So, uh, yeah, I'm definitely, uh, with a, with you guys on that one. I, I forgot to mention Luke Combs too. Like anything that fucking guy puts out on, <laughs> it's like, yeah, you're just, I mean, yeah, you're in. maybe right. it's cause like I'm morphing into Luke Combs, <laughs> older, maybe. grayer, uglier luke holmes less talented (laughs) maybe oh man all right well that is it for this week's episode guys appreciate uh mike and fizz being on here you can follow me on twitter at eric vanek nfl follow the show at america's game pod Uh, a lot of good stuff coming from us um coming up here recently we'll have some announcements so that'll be good uh but yeah mike fizz you guys got anything you want to promote before we get out of here oh really just follow follow the whole south Harmon team right we've uh we've expanded we hired Casey, Casey Kasem, so should be doing some content. Fizz, yourself, uh, eventually Fizz will be on here doing his own thing, his own content on South Harmon. Hired Dynasty Barry, shout out yep. DB, as always. You know, that's mm-hmm. where we get the, the Eric's waiver, what the fuck are we doing here segment. So <laughs> yep. DB is actually officially yep. a member of South Harmon now, and the whole crew, we got, like Eric said, we got some even bigger announcements coming yep. here down the pipe. So just keep checking out the South Harmon crew. It's uh Adam keeps saying, right? It's the mantra of 24 is our year, boys. <laughs> 24 is At our year. At South Harmon FF on YouTube and Twitter. Follow there, too. Fizz, anything for you, man? Uh, yeah, man. This keeps happening in with us, man. Um, I actually wanted to be here today because, one, I wanted to be on the show. But uh, I just know now that we are expanding, there's more minds, more strategies, more different ways and different uh, voices and opinions. So with us bringing on more people, it's going to be a lot of different um things you might not like what i say you might like what such and such is but at least we have different um voices you know what i'm saying you might right. different shows different times so this just keeps happening in with us man and uh always like i said i, I holler back man so holler at your boy anytime at fizzle dollars on anything and uh i'm with south Harmon, man we here glad to be here yeah, we glad you're here today that's for sure yeah hell yeah all right so that is it for this week guys we appreciate you as always thanks for tapping in and we'll see you for next week